大家好, I'm Nathan Rich, aka Dawang. As Huawei's bans in America take hold, I've noticed a lot of strange comments on my videos by people saying things like, well, China bans Facebook, so this is just fair. What a strange thing to say. Do people out there really think there are parallels between Facebook being banned in China and Huawei being banned in America? Okay, well, time to shatter another stupid theory. Many foreigners who come to China complain about how things aren't the way they're used to. I'm no different. Years ago, when I first came, I also didn't understand the culture. Yes, you heard it here first, people. Even I have complained about things before. But as time went on, I started to understand and have respect for the one thing many Westerners have the hardest time accepting. China is not America. China is not Europe. China is not Japan. China doesn't claim to be those places, and it doesn't want to be those places. China is China, and it only wants to be China. Once that concept sets in, it becomes easier to understand China's motives and actions. But let's back up. I'm an American, and I enjoy the liberties of America, rights and privileges often not afforded in other places or cultures. And here in China, there are a different set of what's allowed and not allowed. Because like I said, this is a different country. Being gay carries with it a death sentence in the UAE. In China, it's legal. Peaceful protests are legal in some countries. Contrary to popular belief in the West, in China they are legal unless the protest threatens the state or the country or includes attacks against the army or police. Don't believe me? Here's me at a peaceful protest in China. Many police, many protesters. Practically no incidents. No problem. This was legal. In China, you can drink in public. In the US, you'll be arrested as a criminal. In Iran, you'll probably be killed. Now, I'm not here to tell you which of these laws are right or wrong. The point is, China's not the same as these other places. China is its own place. China has sovereignty and a national identity. It has its own rules. Get it? People outside of China sometimes make videos, posts, and articles about how much they disagree with China's laws. China should be forced to allow its citizens access to Facebook, for example. After all, the US can access Facebook. Why shouldn't China? On the China side, I don't see a lot of online campaigns about how the US should start allowing citizens to carry a beer down the street. That's because China cares most about China. In general, it doesn't comment on other countries' policies because, frankly speaking, it doesn't really care about them. Chinese people aren't having trouble sleeping because people in the US go to jail for drinking one inch away from another person drinking, separated only by a velvet rope. So why do Americans seem to care so much about if Chinese people can access Facebook? Well, they've been raised with a sense of superiority. Many Westerners believe they are superior to non-Western countries. They feel morally superior by default. It's quite interesting to see, actually. Westerners condemn China for not allowing Facebook, while at the same time we know for a fact Facebook isn't healthy, happiness is reduced, and there are a number of negative effects. And honestly, there are really no positive effects, other than being able to keep in contact with acquaintances. But of course, we already have WeChat for that. Actually, I think most people who whine about Facebook are actually talking about freedom of speech. I mean, I hope so, because otherwise that means there are literally people out there who like Facebook that much. The US has freedom of speech at the core of its principles. And because they view the world as inferior to the US, they sometimes feel it's up to them to enforce their views on other countries. Note that the further from the West a culture is, the more the US will complain about it. Britain, for example, has been abandoning any notion of free speech for years, but there's hardly a peep from the US. This Eurocentrism is an after effect of a colonial mindset. Some countries seem quite excited to condemn countries which are unlike them. In short, a superiority complex justifies people to enforce their views on other countries, even when it's clear that the effects can be negative. I just want to point out that literally no other country in the world agrees with the idea that freedom of speech is the most important right. And the United States itself doesn't even really believe this idea. As I'm recording this, thousands of videos are being removed from American social media for political reasons. But let's forget about the insane amount of hypocrisy from all this. Let's just take a look at why China doesn't allow Facebook. People in America don't seem to have the slightest clue about why. They think it has something to do with freedom of speech or criticism or something. No, not really. 
Facebook was blocked for a very specific reason. Didn't know that? Well, then you probably shouldn't be whining about poor old Facebook being blocked if you don't actually know the facts. Recognized as an extreme terrorist group by the US, EU, China, and other countries, the Turkestan Islamic Party is known for suicide bombs, bus bombs, shootings, and murders in China, as well as plots in Norway, Germany, and the UAE. Unlike the vast majority of peaceful Muslims in China, this small group is comprised of a bunch of dangerous killers. Their branch in Syria enjoys employing child soldiers, and their closest allies are Al-Qaeda and other extreme terrorist groups. In 2009, they coordinated a violent riot in China, in which thousands of terrorists attacked citizens, including moderate Muslims. Hundreds of non-Muslim or moderate Muslims were beaten to death on the streets. They surrounded innocent civilians and stabbed them to death. But how did these terrorists coordinate these attacks? Using Facebook. So China tried to get Facebook to ban the group they were using and its members. But since Facebook didn't have any obligation to listen to the Chinese government, they simply ignored the requests. So here we are at a crossroads. Imagine you're in charge of America. There's a Chinese website called Bookface that is allowed in your country. Riots break out with extremists killing people in the streets. They've been known to bomb people, use child soldiers, and you have no doubt they will continue to kill your citizens. You find out that they've been using the Chinese website Bookface to coordinate their attacks. So you contact Bookface and you tell them to block the terrorists. China tells you, oh, sorry, we have freedom of speech, so yeah, sorry about that. Good luck with the terrorists, though. Do you say, well, damn, I guess they're right. Let's just let these terrorists continue to kill innocent citizens because you know what? The entire internet should be open to everyone. Or do you say, okay, well, Bookface is banned in America, that's for sure. We'll make our own damn social media app that we can control so we don't have gangs of organized terrorists coordinating attacks on it. Well, based on some of the stupid comments I get, I'm not even sure which one everyone will pick. So I'll just tell you, the answer that you're supposed to choose is the one where you stop killing people by banning a website. But maybe you're thinking to yourself, it's been 10 years. Why doesn't China unban Facebook and let's just let the past be the past? Well, again, instead of this endless virtue signaling about how everyone should do what the West thinks they should do, why don't you try looking at the situation from the eyes of the Chinese for once? Look at these Facebook groups. This is not 2009, this is right now. I've reported these groups already multiple times, and yet they're still there. These groups are totally fine, according to Facebook. On and on and on. There are hundreds of China hate groups on Facebook. Most of them have been there for years. Okay, so Facebook is totally fine with anti-Chinese hatred. At least they're not still supporting actual incitement of violence, right? There are literally five groups with that name calling for the deaths of Chinese people. These are terrorists directly supported by Facebook. And you know what? I've been making videos about China for around six months now, and in that time, I've gotten exactly two death threats, both of them from the East Turkestan terrorists. That's right, I get death threats for asking questions like, are you sure we should all hate China Western media? Shouldn't we try to be balanced? I face the storm of negative press about China head on. And for it, I get death threats by a terrorist group that Facebook enables. Now, I ask you, why the hell should China allow this website? Why? It sponsors hate. It contributes to the anti-Chinese climate. And when it contributes to direct acts of violence, all we get are a bunch of people whining about freedom of speech. When people are being killed in the streets, there is no more freedom of speech. That's when it's time for safety first. If and when Facebook permanently bans incitement of terrorism and stops fueling colonial fascism, then we can talk about if it should be allowed in China. In the meantime, what you should be asking yourself is, how can you reduce your use of it? I've had a Facebook off and on since it was new. I've reduced my activities to a minimum and I'm working on deleting it altogether. Thank God Facebook is banned in China. And if you're lucky, it'll be banned in your country too. Thanks everybody. See you.